I thought of a really easy way to prove that your art is drawn by a human and not made with AI. If you record yourself actually drawing or painting the image, basically if you record a speed paint, then you can prove that you drew it, right? I think this is the easiest way to prove that a piece of art is made by a human and not AI. Well, actually, never mind, scratch that, because this new AI tool was just released and it is just insane. So basically you can take in one image and it would recreate the speed paint process of that image. So here's one example. You can see that this image was probably generated using stable diffusion. And here you can see it recreating the entire speed paint process. So it knows to start with like simple lines and then coloring it and then adding more details to the color and then adding the background and then adding some lighting effects. This is just absolutely Absolutely insane. Here's another example of Miku. So this is your input image. This is again probably generated using stable diffusion and the AI is able to generate this speed paint process. Again you can see how it's able to first generate simple lines and then refining the outline. It even knows how to like erase some of those lines along the way so it looks like a realistic speed paint and then it proceeds to fill in the base colors of the image and then it adds details to those colors and then it adjusts the brightness and contrast. I am just really impressed by this. Here is yet another example. Notice how in the beginning it's like trying out these different outlines for the character. It actually doesn't just draw out the outline of the final image. It's testing out different versions and erasing and then reiterating. So it looks very much like a real speed paint process. Here is yet another example from Demon Slayer. You can see that it just really nailed the process. Right, it starts from these simple pencil outlines to then adding some shading and then refining these lines and then coloring it base colors and then adding details and more lighting effects to those colors. This is just so realistic. Here's yet another example. Wow, and even the background too, you can see it draws the background like a regular artist would draw the background. Here is yet another example. Notice again the very realistic and iterative process of you know drawing the outline and then refining the outline and then adding the base colors, adding shading, refining the shading and the lighting of the colors, and then adding the background and then adding the brightness, contrast, saturation. This is indeed the regular process of an artist. So. I mean, I don't know about you. If you've been watching a lot of speed paints from various artists, let me know in the comments. Are you able to tell that this speed paint is made with an AI and not a real human? Because I sure wouldn't. Like just from an initial glance of this, this looks so realistic. Here is yet another example. Now this tool is free and open source, so you can download it and run it locally on your computer, which I will show you in the latter half of this video. And the nice thing about this is they have a Gradio interface. So it's not just like typing in lines of code, you can actually run it on quite a user-friendly interface. I'll show you all of that in a second. All right, so here are more examples. So I really like how, you know, initially in this outline this planning stage it really does look like it's drawing a rough outline a rough sketch just like a human would in this example the input image is quite a realistic photo right this is not a painting this is not anime but again it's able to handle the speed paint of this quite realistically as well here is yet another example so this is an oil or canvas painting kind of, it's not really anime, but again, it's able to really simulate the, the painting process of this image. This is just so impressive to me. I know I keep saying that a lot, I sound like a broken record, but you know, in the world of AI, I'm just like mind blown at least once a week from all these new innovative AI tools that keep coming out. And then here's another one. This is more like a retro poster of Superman. But again, it's able to handle this very well. It indeed looks like an artist drawing this iteratively. And then here is a black and white painting. 
And if this was a real painting, then it would not look realistic because, I mean, if you can tell from the original image, this looks like watercolor and you can't erase watercolor. You can't reduce the darkness of watercolor, right? But in their speed paint, they are kind of like adjusting all these settings. So it's not realistic if this was like a real watercolor painting. Here's another oil painting of this portrait of a dog. And in terms of oil painting, I don't know. Does the artist usually paint the background first before they paint the subject? Let me know in the comments below. If that's the case, then this might not be an accurate video on how an oil painting is drawn. And then you can see some inconsistencies. This doesn't look as realistic as the anime examples, but still quite impressive nonetheless. And then finally, we have, I would say like 2.5D image of this cat in this futuristic city. And wow, I love how it uses these lines to brainstorm the background. This again, looks really like someone is drawing and sketching out the outline of this composition. This is so cool. And again, just from an initial look of this, if I didn't pause the video and inspect it any further, if I didn't know beforehand that this was AI, I would not be able to tell that this speed paint was AI. And then here it's showing that with one input image, you can generate multiple outputs. And each output is slightly different in the process, but of course, in the end, it all reaches the same final image, which is your input image. Here's another example of Miku. So if you compare the three outputs, you'll notice that they are slightly different in the process. So, I mean, this is generative AI. So the result you get could be quite different from another generation. Here is yet another example. Again, just subtle differences on how the outlines were created and then how it was colored. So basically, if you don't like one generation, you can always generate it again and see if you like the second one better. Another feature is you can also just extract like a coarse sketch from an input image. So let's say you generated this in Stable Diffusion. Well, you can actually get it to generate just a coarse sketch of the outline of this image. So you can get something like this, which is coarse, something like this, which is very coarse, or something like this, which is extremely coarse. And I guess this is actually a very helpful tool if you're learning to draw, especially digitally, because you can first convert whatever image you want to recreate into this rough outline and then learn to refine it and learn to color it. Here's another example. So this is the final image. You can see that you're able to generate all these different types of rough sketches, depending on what stage you're at in the speed paint. Another idea I thought of is you can use this tool to generate coloring books and drawing tutorials, right? You can just use this tool to generate images based on different stages of the drawing process and perhaps make a drawing tutorial book out of that. And then here's yet another example. So you can see again, you're able to basically extract different stages of the speed painting process of this initial image. So you can either create like a rough outline or you can jump to the stage where you are filling the base colors and the shading of the image such as these two here. Very powerful and useful tool. And then here's another feature. So let's say you are the artist and this is your final output. And then you also have just the outline layer of your image. Well, basically you can plug this in as the start frame and then this would be your end frame and it can fill in the blanks for you. It can create an entire speed paint process based on your start frame and end frame. And now for these examples, this isn't actually from a real artist. What they used to generate this outline is another free and open source tool called Animate to Sketch. And this basically turns any anime image into a sketch outline of that image. This is quite an old tool. This was first created in 2021. But nevertheless, you can use Animate to Sketch to create an outline of whatever image you generated with AI and then use this tool to create a speed paint of that process. And it doesn't even have to be a fully colored, fully polished image. So for example, you can also just take a sketch as you can see here, and it can also generate a speed paint of that sketch only. So this is a very powerful, very flexible tool. 
you can see it's, it's like erasing, adjusting the lines. This looks really realistic. And then here's yet another example. And again, this looks so realistic. So you can see it's like starting off with these rough light gray guidance lines first, and then it's erasing that layer and then drawing a more refined outline of the character and then erasing those reference layers, just like an artist would. Here's yet another example. This time it's of this scenery. And wow, again, this just looks so realistic. This is exactly how an artist would draw. Like the artist would start off with this rough composition and then add in some shading and then proceed further to refine the shading and refine the image. Now there are limitations to this tool. So for example, for realistic photos, it kind of fails to generate those. And this is expected. I mean, this is for drawings mostly. So if you plug in a realistic image, it's just not gonna look great. Also another limitation is if the scene is very complex, like it involves multiple characters, then it might hallucinate a bit and you're gonna see some strange artifacts. But again, if you're not looking closely, I mean, it's really hard to spot any noticeable errors if I'm watching this for the first time and I didn't know this was AI. And then here's another really tricky one. This is a realistic photo of this water bottle with water splashing everywhere. And it's quite hard to do a speed paint of this. I don't blame it. I mean, this is this image is a photograph, right? You don't actually like paint this image out in real life. So it kind of has to guess, well, how would I paint this in real life? And if it doesn't have that in the training data, it's really hard for it to kind of guesstimate how it would carry out a speed paint of this image. And then also, if for whatever reason, this is actually quite an interesting use case. If you have a polished UI UX design and you want to generate a speed paint of that, for example, generate how you would sketch out the initial wireframes, well, it can't really do that well. So you can see here, this speed paint process does not look like how a UI UX designer would actually draw out the wireframes. All right, so enough examples now. Let's actually jump in and test this out. So if you click on their GitHub page, this will take you to this Paints Undo repo. And if you scroll down a bit, here are the instructions to download this locally. Now note that for this tool, it's nice that they've listed out the requirements here. So they've tested this on a 24G 4090 and 3090Ti. It may also work with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So I hope this works for me because I only have 16G. It does not work with eight gigabytes. However, not all hope is lost because the author did suggest down here that he might eventually release a collab notebook. So let's go ahead and download this. To keep things more organized, I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop and name it Paint Undo. You can create a folder anywhere, it doesn't really matter. And then once you open that folder in this navigation bar up here, type in CMD and this will open up your command prompt window. Now it says here the first step is to git clone this repo. So you do need to have git installed. If you don't, here's how you install it. If you already have git installed, feel free to skip to the next section. So all we gotta do is download the latest release for whatever operating system you're using. So I'm using Windows, so I'm just gonna click on download for Windows. I'm running 64-bit, so I'm gonna click on this to download, and it's now downloading this exe file. So once that's completed, all we gotta do is open that exe file and then follow the steps. So I'm gonna click on next. I'm just gonna go with the default install location, which is program files slash git. So I'll click next for that. And then I'm just gonna leave this at the default. And then I'm gonna click next again and click next here. We're just gonna use the default settings for all of these. There's a lot of settings that you need to go through. So I'm just gonna click next for all of these. All right, and then it should go ahead and install all the files. So this might take a few minutes. Perfect, so now we have git installed. Now, assuming you do have git installed, let's go ahead and copy this line and then we'll paste it in here and press enter. All right, perfect. So now in our original folder that we created, you can see this new folder called paints undo. And if you open that, 
this basically is a clone of this repo that you see here. All right, so the next step is to actually go into the directory of paint undo, because right now in our command prompt, we are still in paint undo. This is the folder that we created, which is this one here. We need to go one folder in. We need to go into this paint undo folder. So to do that, we need to type in change directory or CD and then paint undo. So let me paste that in here. So you can see now we are in this paint undo folder. All right, next step is we need to create a Conda environment. So if you don't have Conda installed, this is how you install it. Now, I try to make my videos as beginner friendly as possible. I understand some of you might not even have the most basic packages such as Python or Anaconda installed. So here I'm going to show you how to install Anaconda. If you have it already, feel free to skip to the next section. Now, I'm just on anaconda.com and actually what I'm gonna do is install Miniconda. This is a minimalist version of Anaconda. If you install the full Anaconda, it installs a lot of packages and dependencies that you might not need. This just takes up more room on your computer and of course the installation time is a bit longer. But with Miniconda, it's just a bare bones package and you can always install additional packages and dependencies afterwards. So I'm gonna click on latest Miniconda installer links by Python version and I'm using Windows, so I'm going to install one of these. Now, for free and open source AI tools, usually they do not support Python 3.12, so it's better to install the Python 3.11 version. So I'm going to click on this, which should download an exe file to your computer. Once it's finished downloading, simply double click on this and then follow the steps to complete the installation. So I'm going to click next and then agree, and then let's set this to all users. I'm going to go with the default destination folder, and then I'm going to check this as well, clear the package cache upon completion. This just gives you back some more disk space without affecting functionality. All right, once that's completed, let's click next, and then we are finished. Now we aren't done yet. So if you open up the command prompt and you type in conda dash dash version, you're still going to see that conda is not recognized. This is because we haven't added anaconda to our path yet. So let's exit out of this. And then to add it to our path, we simply search for this function, edit the system environment variables. We're going to click on this and then click on environment variables and then click on the one that says path and then click edit. And here's where you add in the path of Anaconda. So it depends where you installed Anaconda. For me, I installed it in program data. So it's going to be in program data slash mini Conda. And then if I double click on scripts, you can see that Conda is here. So this is the folder we want to paste in. So I'm going to right click on this and then copy as path. And then back in the environment variables window, I'm going to click new and then paste in the path here and then click OK and then OK and then OK again. Now, if you open up command prompt again and type in conda dash dash version, you should see that we are running 24.5.0. So this shows that we have successfully installed Anaconda. Now, assuming you do have Conda installed, I'm going to copy this line and then paste it in here. And so this basically creates a Conda environment, which is called Paints Undo, and this is using Python 3.10. All right, so let's press Y to proceed, and then it's going to install and extract all these packages. There are very few software tools that I use every day, but this is one of them. Thanks to our sponsor, TurboType. This is a tool that I personally use every day. It's free forever and it saves me so much time. Basically, you can create custom keyboard shortcuts so that you don't need to keep typing out repetitive things. For example, if there's a prompt that I use in ChatGPT very often, I can make a shortcut here. And then when I go to ChatGPT or anywhere else, I just need to type in the shortcut and voila. Or let's say I have a very long email address. I can also make a shortcut for that so that whenever I need to enter in my email, I can simply type in the shortcut and it types out the email. Finally, it also supports rich text. So for example, you can add in bold and italics and add links to your text as well. So let's say I need to send out a lot of cold emails with the following template. Well, I can just create a shortcut for that. And then whenever I start an email, I just need to type in the shortcut 
and voila, the text is already styled and linked for me. This tool saves me so much time every day. There's absolutely no reason not to use this because they have a free forever plan. So definitely check it out and download the free Chrome extension in the link below. All right, so once we've created the Conda environment, we need to activate it first. So let's copy this line, Conda activate paints undo. So this basically tells Conda to activate the environment called paints undo. So once you've activated it, you should see the name of your environment in parentheses at the start of every line. So this indicates that you have activated this environment and you're now operating in this environment. So the next step is to install this package called xformers. So let me paste this in here. So depending on your internet, this might take a few minutes to download. All right, after that, you should see that it has downloaded all these packages and dependencies. So the next step is to now pip install all the requirements of this repo. So if you actually scroll into the repo and click on requirements.txt, you can see the packages that are needed for this. So for example, diffusers, transformers, OpenCV Python, etc., etc. So all we got to do is paste this in here, pip install requirements.txt, and then press enter. And then again, this is going to install a series of packages and dependencies, so this is going to take a while. All right, so you can see it has installed another long list of dependencies, but after that is done, we are basically good to go. So we can start running python gradio app.py, and this basically runs this file. And this creates a Gradio interface, which you can use to upload your image and generate the speed paint videos. So all we got to do is paste this in here and then press enter. And then we need to give it a few minutes for this to load as well. All right, so I've hit this error, torch not compiled with CUDA enabled. So just going back to this paints undo repo in this issues tab, some other user already created an issue with the same error message. So someone else suggested that you need to install this. So let's try just copying this line here and then pasting it in here. And note that this is 2.4 gigabytes. So I'm going to pause the video and wait for this to download. All right, so after it has done installing Torch again, let's go ahead and run this Gradio app.py and see if it works. And then you can see right now it's installing some additional models, specifically this Diffusion PyTorch model .safe tensors file, which is 1.7 gigabytes. So that's going to take a few minutes. All right, right now it's proceeding to download some further model.safetenter files, some of which are one to two gigabytes in size. So again, depending on the speed of your internet connection, this might take a while to download. All right, finally, we should get this URL. So if we press control and click on this, it actually does not work yet because this 0.0.0, .0 is incorrect. So what it actually should be is 127.0. 0.0.1. So if you click on this, then finally we have this interface opened. One final thing before we test this out. You might be wondering, well, if you exit out of the session and you want to start a new session the next day, for example, how would you do that? All you need to do is head back to this paints undo folder, which is basically your cloned repo. And then at the top here, type in CMD, which will open up command prompt. And then the first step is you need to use Conda to activate your paint undo environment, which should be called paints underscore undo. And then after you press enter, you should see that paints undo is at the start of every line. And then you would use Python to open up this Gradio app.py file. So all you got to do is type in Python and then Gradio underscore app.py and give this a few minutes to load. All right. And in the end, you should be able to see this local URL link. We can hold control and click into this link. And note that right now it doesn't work because again, these four zeros aren't actually correct. So in most cases, it should be 127.0.0.1. So if I press enter, you should see now we have the interface open. All right, so there are a few nodes and settings here. So I'm gonna go over what all of these mean. So by the end of this tutorial, you should have a good understanding of what these all mean. So first of all, let's upload an image. This is what we want to create a speed paint of. 
So I'm gonna drop in this image. It's quite a simple image, which was generated in Stable Diffusion. And then the first step is to actually get this to generate a prompt. So if I click Generate Prompt, what this does is it uses NAI to analyze the image and determine a prompt based on this image. So, all right, you should see that this is the prompt that it determined. So it's a girl, long hair, blue eyes, blue hair, white dress, etc., etc. All right, next step, we need to generate keyframes. So what on earth do all these numbers mean? You can think of this whole speed paint process as a thousand frames, where frame 999 is the beginning, so this is just a blank canvas, and then frame zero is your end frame. This is your uploaded image. So you are generating one keyframe at step 999. This is basically just a blank image. And then the next keyframe at 950 and then 900 800 etc so basically you're getting the ai to first generate frames at these points in time in this speed paint process now you could add in another one for example you can type in 200 here and this would add another keyframe at step 200 but i usually just leave it at the default there's usually no need to change these settings and then the seed is the starting point that defines your generation. So there can be an infinite amount of different generations, right? And each of them would have subtle differences. So if you set the seed to the same number, you're going to get the same generation again, all else being equal. But for us, we can set it at a random number such as 6969. And then you should set the image with an image height to the size of your image, which in our case, if you hover over our image, it's going to be 800 times 870. So that's what I'm going to enter in here. And then steps is the number of iterations. Again, I just tend to leave it at the default, but feel free to play around with the settings if you want. And then CFG scale, again, I would recommend leaving it at the default value, which is three, but this basically determines how well these images follow your output prompt. So if you drag this all the way to the left, then the AI is more creative and it doesn't have to follow your prompt as much. If you drag it all the way to the right, then it follows your prompt too literally. And sometimes this can introduce unwanted if effects. So again, I just leave it at the default value of three. Negative prompt is all the things you don't want to see in your image. Again, I just tend to leave it at the default. So let's click on generate frames, and then I'll explain more about these frames and then how it relates to these values. By the way, I'm using a Dell Precision 5690. You can integrate a powerful RTX 5000 ADA into this. Huge thanks to Dell and NVIDIA for sponsoring this. All right, perfect. So you can see we've generated these keyframes based on these stages of the speed paint process. Now, why on earth do we need to do this? Well, you can read more info in their GitHub page, but basically to generate a full speed paint process like this, you don't actually generate the full video in one go. So what this is doing is it's actually using this interpolate feature. Remember, this is a feature where you give it two input images the first input image is the start frame, the next input image is the end frame, and it would interpolate everything in between. So basically we're generating all these keyframes, and then we are figuring out what goes in between these keyframes. So for example, take these two keyframes here. It's going to use that interpolation feature to generate what happens in between this start frame and this end frame. And actually what goes in between is 16 frames between the two input images. So after this step is done, next it takes this as the start frame and this as the end frame, and then you generate another 16 frames based on what goes in between these input images. And then you rinse and repeat for all of these keyframes until you reach your final image, which is what you uploaded. All right, so the next step is to just generate the video. Again, seed is basically your starting point. There's an infinite number of starting points you can have, right? So for example, you can set this to like just a random number, and then CFG scale sampling steps. We've gone over that before. Again, I just tend to leave it at the default. And then FPS is just frames per second. So, all right, everything is good. Let's click on generate video. And you can see it's generating videos one out of seven. So it's actually generating seven videos because it's generating one video in between each of these keyframes. And then it's gonna stitch all those videos together to create your final video. All right, we are done. So let me play this for you.
Very nice. Very, very nice. And there you go. That is the speed paint of this image. And the really nice thing about this is it actually breaks down all the frames for you. So this is four frames per second. This is around 26 seconds. So 26 times four is, oh God, I can't do public math. What is 26 times four? 104, of course. So here you're gonna see all 104 frames from the speed paint. And you can download any one of these if you want by clicking this arrow over here. And so this is a really awesome tool for you to learn how to draw. Like if you wanna learn how to draw outlines or learn how to color or play around with the lighting, the shadows, etc., you could just download one of these templates to help you out. This is also perfect for making drawing tutorials and books, right? So you can like showcase how you would draw a character from step one to step two, step three, etc. So this is a very powerful tool. Let me try one more. So let me exit this. And then this time I'm going to upload a trickier generation. This contains three characters. And as the GitHub suggested, sometimes it doesn't work well with more complex drawings with multiple characters. So let's see if this works. I'm going to click generate prompt. And then next step is we need to generate keyframes. Again, I'm just gonna leave everything at the default, but I am going to change the width and height to the width and height of this image, which is 800 by 694. So 800 by 694. And then to make this slightly faster, let's set the number of steps to 40 and then click generate. And here we go. Here are the keyframes along the speed paint process, which we specified here. And then the next step is to generate the video. Now we do need to tweak the prompt slightly because right now it just says one girl. Actually, this is two girls and one guy. I'm just gonna paste this prompt that we generated in step one into here. And then for sampling steps, just to make this slightly faster, let's just set it to 40 instead of 50 and then click generate video. All right, our video is finished. So let me play this for you. Not bad, not bad. You can see there are some noticeable flaws with this. It's not as good as just one character, but this is a known issue of this tool as specified in the GitHub. It's not good with more complex scenes or multiple characters. That being said, if this is just a first glance and you were not aware that this was AI, it would still be quite hard to tell unless you were looking closely. And then at the bottom here, you can see all the frames that were generated. And that's it. This is a really cool and powerful tool. All right, so that sums it up for Paints Undo. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. If you run into any errors with the installation, again, welcome to ask in the comments and I'll try to help you troubleshoot as much as possible. Also, what do you think the use case of this is? Like for me, I can think of a few. You can use this to learn how to draw or use this to create drawing tutorials and books. Now, I do think some artists are gonna really hate this for whatever reason, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, I will be on the lookout for the newest and coolest AI tools to share with you. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, we built a site where you can find all the AI tools out there as well as look for jobs in AI, machine learning, data science, and more. So check that out at ai-search.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.